Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Terminus Breach Tower Defense by Matt Lloyd. It's for one to three players, about 60 to 180 minutes, and for ages 13 and up. In the game Terminus Breach, you're going to be playing as a commander of an army of towers. You're going to be working together or by yourself to destroy these scary little monster units that are going to be roaming through the map. Now, much like other tower defense games, monsters are going to crawl across the map, you're going to be attacking them with your towers, and working together to do so. However, in this one, you're actually going to be building towers, upgrading them, the creeps will spawn at the beginning, and like a maze, they're going to go throughout the map. Uh, you've seen these on other games like StarCraft and the Warcraft custom maps and whatnot, and I've yet to see a game where it actually has the creatures moving around the map doing so, where you're actually going to be trying to block their spawns and slow them down and all that kind of stuff. And this game does that, in which you're going to be placing down um, uh, favors, sanctions, and uh, tons of other cool stuff as well. But the game, yeah, is basically creating your own little map and stopping the units from getting through the other side and if they do that you're going to lose life points until the point in which you're actually going to be overrun and you will lose the game or if you can destroy them all before all the waves have gone through you're going to be the winner of the game let me show you what it look, looks like Okay, so here we have the game Terminus Breach, and as you can see, it's huge. There's a little extra on this side of the board as well. But the main idea is there is a board in which you're gonna be placing down tiles, and these tiles are gonna either represent forestry, rocks, or building locations. And here's the creep spawn, and as you can see, it kind of moves around the board like this, and it keeps going. Uh, these little areas I've blocked over, just so you guys can see the battle tracker and whatnot are actually covered as well, so creeps can't get through. Uh, each player is gonna to get to choose one of their uh, characters, the Seer of the Wood, there's a spiritual leader. There's other ones like political leaders and war leaders as well. They're also going to collect uh, their level 1 through 3 cards in which you can level up throughout the game as you do certain uh, objectives. You're going to be collecting dead Draka, which are the units that are bad, and in which you're going to be using them as uh, points in the game as well as spy network and war chest tokens that will give you certain things as you collect more and more of them. This is the wave tracker in which it indicates which wave it's on, what battle it's on, and how your panic level has increased. This is to signify that monsters have crossed the border and are now uh, damaged you, so it's dangerous, you don't want that to go over. These over here are all the different pieces you can get in the game. So you got battle one, two, three, all the way to five, and these are different battles. And in each battle there's three different waves, and you're going to be spawning monsters that go across the board, or placed across. And so you're going to get each of these decks, and there's a plethora of different monsters. You're going to have the undead, and ogres, and imps, and kobolds, and all kinds of things. And the monsters get scarier as the battles progress. You're also going to get imperial favors. These you can acquire through either... Uh, getting them through either uh, petitions or other other ways, I think. This, these guys here are going to be giving you different things. Uh, tax collector is going to give you more money, and then you got stuff like the spy networks, and um, these guys here, falconry, gives you plus one range in battle. Pretty useful. As well as imperial sanctions. These are like the ultimate abilities. They cost a lot more, but you get to choose which one you want, and they do, 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 do stuff like destroy all Draka on, a three connected, on three connected squares. So one, two, three. Destroy all Draka in that area. Very powerful. Extra playing boards here so you can make your own map or use additional maps that they provide with you. You're going to then get money and honor and all this kind of stuff. These are all the different abilities you're going to be using throughout your characters. Maybe you're going to give your towers Valkyr's Might or uh, Mercer's Blessing. These are the war chests and spy networks to put on your card. Petitions in which you're going to get if you don't destroy units on your turn you're going to get petitions and those you'll be able to use to buy Imperial Favors and Imperial Sanctions. This is the amount of damage you're going to be dealing to the units and you're just going to place them on there. A die for certain things as well as a Additional towers, these are all the tower pieces for each of the different types of generals. As you can see, they're color coded based on the general, so it makes it easy for you. And uh, finally, you're going to get these little uh, front and back cards here, which represents which tower. So if I place a tower down, I can say, okay, the first tower I've created is this one here, and then when I level it up, now it's this one here. So it makes it easier for you to tell which towers are which. But that is basically what you're going to be getting in the game of Terminus Breach. So setup's pretty easy in the game, right? You're just going to set up the board, you're going to get a character, you're going to get the character's level ups, and you're going to choose whether you want him to be human or elf or dwarf, as well as getting 450 gold and dividing it up between one to three players, get your battle board and put all the waves, battles, and the panic level down, and it all starts at one to begin with. Make sure that you get the towers that are appropriate to your class, and then you're pretty much set to go. After you've set up the whole entire board, you're going to select the battle that you're going to be fighting, which is obviously battle one, put it on the space that is, with, that is next to an empty area on the board, and you're going to roll a die to see who gets to go first. Um, once you've done that, you're going to then place towers down, and it's going to be from first player to second to third, and then third goes again, second and first, similar to Catan, right? After you've placed all your towers down and you've spent all your money, then you're going to begin the round phase in which you're going to have the um, monster spawn based on the 
the battle phase. So like, for instance, I rolled a two, I would have two plus any modifiers that would be added to that round. In the first round, I think it's two, so it spawned four monsters. You put them down the board based on how far they're supposed to go, and uh, then you're going to go ahead and kill them. If there were any monsters on the board previously, you would have to move those first, and then spawn the new ones. If you can't place them down the board because the board is filled up, they're just going to be discarded. And after that, you're going to go into the phase in which you're going to be buying and selling stuff. You're going to upgrade your towers, you're going to buy favors, you're going to gain Imperial Seal if you haven't uh, done any, or sorry, petitions, if you haven't done any damage or killed any monsters, uh, in which case you're going to be using those for cards, because certain classes are only going to be using, are going to be less attacking and more kind of diplomat kind of style, where others are way more damagey, like dwarves. After that, you're going to go on to the next wave. There's three waves, and then after you finish the three waves, you go on to the next battle, and at that point, you're going to be discarding all the monsters you've killed, gaining a bunch of victory points and whatnot, depending on the spite networks you have, as well as a couple other things, and going back to the next battle. After all five battles are done, if you haven't lost all of your panic level, then you're going to add up all your points to see who the winner is, or if you're playing cooperatively, it doesn't really matter. However, if at any point you're going to go up past your panic level, and all the monsters have gotten across, then you're going to lose the game. Let me show you a couple rounds of play and how it kind of works. Okay, so we're back, and as you can see, I went ahead and set the board already. We had uh, the human player, he went and placed, and then we had her, she placed, and then she placed again, and finally the human player again. Put these little Terminus Breach Tower Defense um, tokens here to represent which tower it is that we are currently using based on the amount of money, and I went ahead and distributed the gold evenly. So we started with 450, so they each got 225. After that, it tells you how much these guys are going to cost, and you went ahead and built those. You have the Battle 1 deck here ready to go, and as you can see on these towers, it's going to tell you the damage, and then the range, and then the amount of targets it's going to hit. After that is all done, you're going to then advance any of the Draka that are currently on the board. There's none here for the first round, but if there was, then you would advance them across based on their movement. After that is done, you're going to go ahead and draw uh, a roll of die and add a modifier to that die. And for this round specifically, it's going to be two. So in this case, there is one Draka that's going to spawn with a bonus of two. You're going to then take these guys out and tell us how much they're going to move here. So it says two, right? One and then the two. If it is flying, it go up. And if it is on the ground, it goes down. And now you take another one. Here's a flyer and it goes up here, one and two. This space is now locked. Take another one here, and this says two, but because it can't go here, this space is locked, it's going to go back down. If both of these spaces were all locked, then this guy would be discarded. He wouldn't count because he can't be added, right? So now that you got all three of these guys here, they are done being put on. And if these guys were here previously, beforehand, then you would have had to advance them. All right, now we're going to go to the defend action, okay? So we're looking at the towers here. We choose one player to go first, and they're going to use all of the towers up that they have. This guy here said, okay, he's going to go ahead and target, um, so he targets this guy right here, right? And it's going to be for one damage, um, and uh, it can hit two targets. So maybe he'll get one damage for this guy, one damage for this guy, and we'll just we'll just hit him twice. Why not, right? So we'll look over here, and it tells you the damage tokens, and you're going to go ahead and put them on here. Just like that, nice and easy. Has a total of 12 health, as you can see, and threat is one. So if he gets across the board here, he's going to put our threat meter up, and we don't want that to happen because we'll lose the game if we get uh, our panic level goes above, or where it can go. Okay, so after he's on his tower, he can do this one over here, and this one is the, basically the same tower here, so he can go ahead and hit this guy. He'll hit him for two. And then his towers have all been used up because this one, uh, uh, no, this tower has been used up. So now it's this guy, but this tower can't be used. It's too far away. However, this one can be. This has got a range of two and does two damage, but only hits one target. So he'll actually go ahead and hit this guy for two, moving it to three. Now this guy's health, it was 12. It's 11, 10, 9, now eight health. After that is done, all the damage can be dealt that is dealt, then you're going to go to the resolve phase where you're going to either collect bounty. So bounty is if you kill these guys, you'll get the gold value for them. In this case, 20. But if this guy died, if not, then you're going to go ahead and collect petitions. And these are the petitions right here. Because neither of them killed units, they're both going to get a petition. With petitions, you can go ahead and use these to buy Imperial Favors or Sanctions. I think Sanctions is about five to use one, but you can choose the one you want. And then Favors is two for one, three for three, five for five. And these cards do different things. You're going to be using them to gain War Chests and Spy Networks. They're going to either give you gold or additional victory points uh, throughout the game. So they're very, very useful. Also, if you've killed enough things and acquired a Spy Network and a Tax Collector, or over here it says this or this, you're going to actually get to level up. And level up tells you what you can do. This says take two shots, 
guaranteed position and uh, cast falconry instantly. And then you go to the next one, and you're going to be trying to level up throughout the game because they're going to give you bonuses. And not only that, but after that's all done, there's a development phase in which you're going to be building your extra buildings if you want, as well as upgrading towers. So for instance, if I wanted to upgrade the spear tower and I was playing as a human, I would simply spend 50, and this would upgrade. And um, the next player, if he wanted to uh, upgrade maybe this tower here, he could spend 50 as well, and he would be able to upgrade this tower as well. So you're going to be able to upgrade your towers, which will do then more damage, have more range, and potentially even more targets. After that's done, you're going to go back to the beginning, in which you're going to go ahead and move the wave to the second wave. Have all these guys move their movement, so in this case two, and then two, and um, one, because he can't actually go any farther because this thing's, this thing's blocked. So, uh, actually, no, sorry, he would go one more. That, that would be how it work. After they have moved, then you're going to go to the battle phase again, in which you're going to be rolling the die, adding the modifier. So, five plus two is seven. Here we go. Here's a big one here. One and two. This guy doesn't work. Three. Four, five, six, hopefully don't get a flyer, seven, okay. So now we've added all the extra guys we can. And then, once again, we would repeat itself. We would have each of the towers choosing the units to do damage to, collecting money as we killed them, and if we didn't kill things, collecting petitions, using those petitions to buy certain things, then moving forward to upgrading our towers, adding new towers to the board in locations like these, as well as adding some bonus towers that do other different things that are interesting, and additionally, using these specific abilities here, like Valkyr's Might, to give our towers a bonus of some sort. Putting more damage on these guys, you get the idea. Once all three waves have been completed, we go to the next battle phase in which we add the next battle cards to over here and we start flipping those guys as well. We leave all units on the board that are still alive for each battle and after all five battles have been done uh, we are going to then move on to uh, winning hopefully. Now remember though after each battle has concluded we're going to be removing all the dead drakas because these are where our dead drakas are going to go. Removing those and adding points for them and uh, acquiring different things as well. We'll go ahead and talk about that up above. So some caveats now. Before you go ahead and switch from the, to the next battle after three waves, you're going to go ahead and look at this reference cheat, sheet, which is going to tell you how it works. Spy networks and war chests. These are cards. These are things you're going to give it, be getting from the Imperial favors. And as you get spy cards, if you get three of them before the next battle, you're going to gain 10 victory points before starting that. And then, of course, five will get you two spy networks, which is 15 points, and so on and so forth. War chests will get you gold. So if you have three uh, tax collectors... Uh, it gives you one war chest, and that'll give you 150 gold for the next battle. Every single battle that starts, this you're going to get these bonuses here. You're also going to get a single victory point for each level of tower you have. So if you have a level 4 tower and a level 1 tower, it's going to give you 5 victory points. And also one extra uh, victory point per dead draka that you have uh, on your dead draka area on the board. You're going to return them to the box after that, though, before you begin the next battle. And it tells you some other interesting things here about shooting rules, how you have to shoot if you can, and uh, draw, mod draw modifiers, as well as some, some movement rules as to how ground units work. But that's the basic aspect of the game. You'll be trying to gain as many victory points as you can, which gives up that competitive nature, as well as working together to destroy the units that are going across the board. If they get to the end of the board and the threat lead panic level goes over 10, then you guys have all lost. Otherwise, at the end of the game, whoever has the most victory points is going to be the winner of the tower defense game, Terminus Breach. Okay, so going over a couple more things, too, because I think it's interesting that we look at some of these things. The human towers, right? You've got the chapel, which is actually going to give you blessings, right? So you got, oh, uh, 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 this one's Mercer's Blessing here. And you can put it on any tower within two spaces. So this tower alone doesn't do damage, but it will increase the damage of a tower that is near it. You've got spear towers that turn into ballista towers, that turn into gun towers, that turn into chain gun towers, boiling oil the Boulder Tower, Mortar Tower, and the Bombard Tower. These guys are all going to get improved as you upgrade them, and they do significantly more damage. And it's kind of going to be depending on you how you want to facilitate your towers. And do you want to just upgrade one more than all the rest of them, or do you want to have a plethora of towers going all the way across? And um, how are you going to upgrade your ta how are you going to power up your towers other than just the main um, the chapel, right? And all, every single one of the different types of factions has their own unique blessings and invocations. For instance, this little card here, this is an invocation 
invocation card, and it's going to give invocation of Wathina or something else along those lines. And it'll tell you when you put, it says, okay, put one of these guys on the tower, plus five damage and plus a range. It's really good. These Imperial Sanctions are amazing. You can get from petitions if you get five petitions. Then you're going to be getting these guys here. The Warlike Factions are less likely to get it, and the Diplomatic uh, Factions are way more likely to get it because they are the ones that won't be killing as much. They're kind of working together, acquiring spy networks and all that kind of stuff. You've got the Imperial Favors too. As I said before, you can get to, uh, one for two of the petitions, three for three and five for five, or the big five for one on this one here. And these guys will give you stuff like the Tax Collectors, which it says you can collect immediately. Um, collect according to the current battle. So if it's battle one, you get 50 gold points for this card. If it's battle two, you get 100, so on and so forth. And so you're going to get more of these. And as you collect enough tax collectors, you're then going to get one of the tokens for the uh, spy network, right? Um, as, oh, sorry, yeah, for the, for, with a war chest. And the other one is the spy, and that's the spy network. And this one will actually say that you kill any Draco within one square of your tower or prevent one tower from shooting this turn, which was also not going to give you any bonuses as far as gold, but as you build more spy networks, you're going to get more victory points at the end of the game, which is useful. There's other cards too in here as well, I believe, like Falconry, which is going to give you a range and a battle, Combustion, which is plus two damage in battle for elves and dwarves, while humans get plus one damage, and a couple other things too, like Apathy, plus one to slow, so that's pretty useful as well. Um, but there is a plethora of different things in the game, right? So this kind of goes into the portion of where I'm telling you what I think about it. All that's kind of included, right? Is the fact that you can upgrade your towers. There is a plethora of different things you can do. However, there are mainly for each faction these three different types. But there's three factions, so that's kind of unique as well. And it is a cooperative slash competitive game. Which is kind of weird to me as I sat there. It was like, I want to work together with him, but at the same time, I want to kill things more than him. So I can get the victory points. And if I don't work with him, we're going to lose. But if I do work with him, I have to be careful not to let him get the, the benefits of, you know, taking over my units and killing that kind of stuff. Uh, you want to get your own spy networks and war chests because they're going to give you benefits like additional gold as well as additional um, of the victory points in the game because it's very important. Realistically, though, I'd probably like it a little more if it was all com it was, if it was all um, cooperative and not competitive. If the game was more like two different teams and then you had units going across the board, like like something like the World of Warcraft, or, or it's not World of Warcraft, Warcraft 3, how you had that happening, I'd be more okay with the competitive nature. But because I feel like I want to be cooperative in this game, but I can't, it does kind of hinder it a little bit. The other negative I will say is as you're damaging the Draka, you're going to be upgrading your towers and they're going to get sufficiently stronger. And and with that comes a lot of damage tokens, and I mean a lot. And then monsters get huge. In Battle 5, you got stuff like demons and uh, Fen Maze Minotaurs, 66 health, 57 health, and your highest damaging towers are likely to be like 12 damage. So you're going to have to start doing some maths here, which is, you know, a thing you have to do when you're damaging the units. I think if it was a little lower in damage and a little lower in health all around, it would be a little easier to calculate. Um, because it can start getting, uh, after a while, because the game can last about three hours, it can start getting a little um, uh, taxing on your mind. It's not too bad, but I thought I'd mention it for people who are not as much into the maths. Overall, though, this game is cool, because I've always wanted to play a game that was a tower defense game where you actually used towers, and actually had the minions moving around the board, and you had to actually build up your towers, and it feels like those games I used to play on StarCraft and WarCraft, and that is what I wanted to see in a board game. It has a, a couple clunky features in it, but I think as the game is going to be manufactured, like getting, getting out there, like, um developed and whatnot i think those things will be fixed the component quality is amazing there's a ton of different cards in here a ton of different stuff you can do i like the different facts like you have rocks and then you have forestry and they do different things based on the fact that you can put certain towers on certain ones this is a prototype so it's not fully completed but the artwork here is fun it's cartoony and it feels very similar to those old games on the computer which is what i wanted to see in a game so overall i'm very satisfied with this game this game uh there's a couple little things in it but realistically this is a game I would definitely play again. I just hope they reduce the amount of, of of time and thinking as the game gets on for the amount of numbers. Maybe it's just me, but I'm not a numbers person. Overall though, good game. My stamp of approval. Hi right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out those other videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment on all those help. Subscribe, 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 please. As well as checking out Terminus Breach. If you like games that involve those old Warcraft, Starcraft, Tower Defense games, this one's gonna be up your ally. 
ally, Ali. And also, if you don't want to play cooperatively and you want to play really competitively, this will work well. Also, you can take out the whole um, competitive rules and just play cooperatively, and this still works as a fun game. Either way, is going to be fun. Also, check our website, unfiltergamer.com. Got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and my personal friend, Ferdinand, the cardboard stacker. Great uh, sites and a great guy as far as tutorials goes. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and as always, I look forward to seeing you next time.